State Department had the well-deserved reputation of being extremely elitist. It was pale male in Yale. The fact of the matter was, they could never conceive that a black man could ever be an ambassador. It's difficult to fully conceptualize what it meant to be black in the government during that time period. These three diplomats represented progress, but it was an uphill battle. The new PBS documentary, The American Diplomat, is a good addition to the collection of American education about our history of discrimination and exclusion. It tells the story of three African-American ambassadors who broke racial barriers at the height of the civil rights movement. Despite obvious inequities, the men reached high-ranking appointments in the Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy administrations. The director of the film is Leola Kalzali Stewart, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You know, I pulled this quote, and I, I don't know. It's just so fascinating that um, these men were asked to represent the best of America abroad while facing discrimination at home. That had to be unbelievable. Yeah, you know, I think it was a difficult time to be a black representative of the United States, um, but these were three men who believed in what they were doing. They believed in diplomacy and its importance. And um, also they believed in trying to make change within the institution. Uh, I guess it's not surprising that African-Americans had trouble breaking into government like anywhere else at a certain point in time in history, but what was it about the State Department that that was the last one that they could break into? Well, the State Department had a long history of elitism. I mean, it was really, you know, in the early days of the State Department, the, um, they were political appointees, uh, diplomats had their own personal wealth. Um, they were generally pulled from the same Ivy League schools. I mean, the term was pale, male, and yell. And so because of this sort of elitist um, character and culture, and because it's also diplomacy in and of, its, in and of itself, is a, a job that's really kind of shrouded in a mystique and not really understood. Um, you know, it was hard for, for people to break into, into this world as people of color, African Americans, women. Um, you know, it was, it was a, a tough institution to, to crack. Maybe you can get, talk about these men individually and, and where they went as diplomats, Carl Rowan, Edwin, D Edward Dudley, and Terrence Todman. Well, Edward R. Dudley was a lawyer with the NAACP before being selected by Truman to go to Liberia. And while he was in Liberia as a minister of the um, American legation there, the legation was... Uh, became an, uh, an embassy. And so then he became an ambassador, our first African-American ambassador. Terrence Todman was originally from the Virgin Islands. He had been drafted into the army. He went to Japan where he learned Japanese. He was a, a real a brilliant linguist. And he served in countries all over the world. I mean, he was in parts of Africa and parts of Europe and parts of Latin America. He had, he was a career ambassador, 40 year career. Uh, Carl Rowan was a journalist. Um, he actually, um, after leaving the State Department, uh, wrote a syndicated column for the uh, Chicago Sun-Times. But um, he was a journalist who was tapped by Kennedy to come into the State Department. And he was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Public Affairs, which was the highest ranking African-American in the State Department at the time. He eventually became ambassador to Finland. Um, and then under Johnson, became the director of the USIA uh, before resigning and going back into journalism. So how, how did they break through, though? Was it one thing that happened? Was it happenstance? How, how, especially, you know, the first one to break through. Well, Edward R. Dudley, um, you know, it was a time when Truman, I think, was, uh, you know, looking to build ties within the black community. And so he reached out, to, his team reached out to the NAACP for um, suggestions for candidates for this post to Liberia. And they recommended Edward Dudley. He goes to Liberia. And one of the things that he really felt was an important part of what he was able to accomplish while he was there 
there was uh, breaking the Negro circuit. Um, black foreign service officers during that time were relegated to a small handful of posts. Um, Liberia, Haiti, Madagascar, to name a few of those. And they were cycled through these posts. Now, um, in the Foreign Service, you're supposed to change post every two to three years. You're supposed to be able to go anywhere in the world. But Black Foreign Service officers during that time could only go to five posts, which mm. was illegal and against for, uh, Foreign Service policies. And so Edward R. Dudley uses his legal background to um, to try to change that. And before he leaves, the State Department was able to help um, Black Foreign Service officers uh, get post and in Europe for the first time. Well, it's fascinating. We appreciate you joining us. It's The American Diplomat. It premieres tonight on PBS. Leola Calzalai Stewart, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Hey, thank you for having me. Take care. You too. We'll be right back.